Welcome everyone to uh, this lecture. And today we will be starting a new topic uh, of circular motion. So initially, uh, and the uh, topic of circular motion, we will be uh, dealing with quantities like angular displacement, angular uh, velocity, and such. Now, all these terms are similar to that what we learnt in kinematics like velocity, displacement, position, acceleration and so on. So the initial part of the chapter would be covering uh, the part related to the kinematics and the later part of the chapter would be related to the ideas of forces involved in circular motion. So that part will be dealing with the loss of motion side of circular motion. So let us begin. So. Uh, First, uh, we will be uh, remembering that okay, when we started uh, the study of physics, so we studied seven fundamental qualities on which the whole uh, uh, basis of the physics for class 11th and 12th is laid. So, uh, besides those seven fundamental qualities, we have two supplementary qualities called the plane angle and the solid angle. So what are they and how are they defined? So the supplementary angle, supplementary quantity number one is, is plane angle. So plane angle is defined by using a circular arc. And a circular arc is a line which is part of a bigger circle which we have drawn like this. And we define the plane angle as the ratio of the length of the arc, which is let's say L, and the radius of the circle of which the circular arc is part of. And that is what we say that the angle subtended by this arc AB at the center of the circle, let's say that angle is some theta, is defined as the length of the arc that is L divided by the radius of the circle that is R. So uh, L was length of the R divided by the radius of the circle of which the R is part of or we can simply say the radius of the R. Now let us move on what is the uh, unit of the angle theta. So there are multiple units for the angle theta. The SI unit which we say for uh, the angle for a plane angle uh, is one radian. So it is, it is written as one RAD that is one rad for short and one radian is defined as the angle subtended by that circle arc whose length and the radius of the arc are same. So we say if we uh, draw a hypothetical arc whose uh, length is A and it's part of a circle whose radius is also A. Then it would be subtend one radian at the center of the arc. So this is uh, the sign unit of the angle that is one radian. And beside the uh, unit which we encounter in mathematics for the angle theta uh, is called one degree. So we know that 180 degree is equal to pi radians. So from this we can uh, uh, define 1 degree as uh, pi divided by 180 radians. So that would be the value of 1 degree whenever we want to convert some degree uh, angle into radians then we would multiply it by pi by 180 as 1 degree is pi by 180 degrees. For example, let's say I want to find what is 4 degrees. So 4 degree would be equal to 4 times pi by 180 radian. So that would be pi by 45 radians. Uh, now 1 degree is a pretty small angle. But when we talk about astronomical scales, these angles become uh, even more smaller. So even smaller angles which we have is... Uh, minute. So we say that one degree is made up of 
60 minutes. So we would say 1 minute is equal to pi divided by 180 divided by 60 radians. And we would say that 1 minute uh, in itself is made up of smaller uh, unit that is called seconds. So you say that 1 second is made up of 60 minutes or we say 1 second in radians can be written as as we can say 1 second is made up of 60 minutes we will simply divide 1 minute by 60 so that would be 180 divided by 60 divided by 60 radians and that would be equal to 1 second. Next, let us come to a uh, solid angle. So, instead of uh, a line subtending at an angle at the center of the circle, now we will be having a surface uh, like this. So, let us have a surface which is spherical in nature. And by spherical in nature, we mean that it is part of a circle. Let us say the radius of that circle is some r. So, that means all the points on the surface are at the distance r from the uh, from the center. So the angle subtended by this whole surface at the center of the sphere is called the solid angle. So uh, this angle is symbolized by delta omega and its value is defined as the surface area of which the angle is subtending, which is subtending the angle divided by the square of the uh, radius of the surface. So this is what solid angle is. Uh, besides this, we have one more formula for solid angle that if you have a circular disc uh, as your surface and you want to find the angle subtended by the circular disc uh, at a point on its axis. So it's a we only need one quantity, which is the semi-vertical angle which the disc makes at the center. And we'd say the solid angle which uh, which is subtended by the surface on the center or, or let's say the point O which we are considering. Let's say this angle is theta, or the semi-vertical angle is theta. The angle which is subtending is equal to 2 pi 1 minus cos theta, where theta is the plane angle subtended by this line on the vertex of the cone. So, we, this is the angle subtended by this surface, by this circular disc on the point O. Uh, the unit for uh, solid angle is 1 stay radian. That is the SI unit for solid angle. And we would say 4 pi stay radian is the angle subtended by a sphere at its center. So that is the complete angle which the sphere subtends at the center. In the same way, if we divide the sphere in two parts, then we would say the angle uh, subtended by uh, the half a sphere, let us say hemisphere, by hemisphere at the center would be 2 pi stay radian. That would, it would be half of the complete value, that is 4 pi stay radian. Okay. So, uh, let us move on to angular displacement. So, uh, how do we define angular displacement? So, angular displacement uh, can be easily defined. We can say, let us say there is a circle. There is a line passing through the center of a circle. A particle starts from point on the x axis and from the x axis, uh, it goes along the circle the point B. So, we would say the angle subtended by the path of the particle on the center along which the direction in which the particle is traveling is called the angular displacement. So, we would say theta is the angular displacement of the particle. 
Now it is important that in which direction the particle is traveling. For example, let's say uh, we have a circle and a particle goes from point A to point B where point B is at some angle 75 degree. The particle is going in this direction. Now, so this particular uh, direction in which the particle is going in is called anti-clockwise sense. So anti-clockwise sense anti-clockwise sense can be imagined by thinking of a clock and in which direction uh, does the clock tick as time increases. So as a clock ticks from point B to A. So the particle is going from A to B, so it's going in anti-clockwise sense. So uh, arbitrarily we can define that key, let's say this angular displacement is positive. So if arbitrarily we are saying that a particle is going from A to B is defined as positive angular displacement, then we would say, let's say there is a particle at point B and it is going to A. So uh, this particular angular displacement uh, would be same in magnitude, right? It would be again traveling the angle 75 degree. But now it is traveling in clockwise sense. That is, it is going along clock. So in that case, angular displacement would be counted as negative. So in case number one, if I were to write what is the angular displacement of the particle, so I would simply write the angular displacement would be 75 degrees into pi by 180. That would be the angular displacement uh, of this particle in radians. So this value will uh, come out to be some value that is 5 and 12. So that would come out to be some 5 pi by 12 radians and that would be a positive value right why would it be positive value as we have defined that anti-clockwise sense is positive so uh, the displacement or the angular displacement in this case would be the negative of that value that would be minus 5 by 5 by 12 radians that is the magnitude of angular displacement would remain same in both the cases, just the direction would change. So we have a question which illustrates this idea and makes it very clear to us okay, uh, what are the direction of angular displacement, how do we consider it positive and negative. So the figure for the question is on the next page. So, uh, <coughs> so, in this question, a particle is going from A to B and then it is moving from point B to C. Now, the point C is making an angle 30 degree with the y axis and we are asked that a particle goes in circle from point A to B and then B to C. We have to find the angular displacement in those cases. The angular displacement of the particle when it is going from point A to B, so the point B particle is going from point A to B. So we know that this angle is 90 degree, right? So angular displacement for the particle going from A to B in anti-clockwise sense is 5 by 2 radians. That we know. And now the particle goes from point B to C. This angle is 30 degree. So the angle which the particle traverses through is 
simply uh, 11 pi by or it's a uh, some value that would be pi minus pi by 6 radian so that would be 5 pi by 6 radians again this value would be in positive uh, or that this value would be a positive value as particle is going in uh, anticlockwise sense now uh, we are given the idea that in the previous example in the next question in the previous example if the particle goes from point A to C in clockwise sense would the magnitude of angular displacement be greater or lesser than if it were good if, it, if it were to go in anticlockwise sense so let's say the particle is going from point A to C in uh, clockwise sense so the particle is going from point A to C in clockwise sense then we would say that the magnitude of angular displacement would be this angle right uh, the particle would go through this angle it say that would be the angular displacement uh, the angular displacement would be some value that would be 2 pi by 3 radians and it would be negative as it is going in clockwise sense uh, and we are talking about the magnitude of angular displacement so we take a mod sign so this would come out to be 2 pi by 3 while the particle when it goes from A to C in anticlockwise sense then the angular displacement of the particle from point A to C would be uh, 2 pi minus 2 pi by 3 well, that would be 4 pi by 3 radians so definitely the angular displacement in the anti-clockwise case would be uh, greater than the angular displacement in clockwise case so next let us define what is average angular velocity So, average angular velocity uh, can be denoted by omega AV symbol. Uh, it is defined as the ratio of angular displacement of the particle in a time interval divided by the time interval. So, that would be the value of average angular velocity. This is similar to the formula for uh, linear velocity which we saw. That was the displacement of the particle divided by the time interval of the particle. So, uh, let us take a case, let us take an example to learn about this. A car goes in a circle and covers uh, consecutive angular displacements, pi by 2, 2 pi by 3 and pi radians each in 5 minute of time interval. So, we have to find the average angular velocities in respective time interval in radians per minute. So, let us say the first angular velocity, the angular velocity defined in case number 1 is angular displacement pi by 2 divided by the time taken in that displacement that is 5 minutes. That would be pi by 10 radians per minute. Angular displacement in second time interval, the second time interval the angular displacement is given as 2 pi by 3 radians. Uh, the time taken is 5 minutes so that would be 2 pi divided by 15 radians per minute angular displacement in third time interval is pi by 5 radians per minute so that is the simple idea right uh, angular displacement divided by the time taken in that displacement that is average angular velocity so, in this particular video, we will be covering up till uh, this point only. That is, what is the definition of average angular velocity? So, that we did. What is angular displacement? What is anti clockwise, clockwise? And what are the SI units of angles? So, uh, 
थैंक यू फॉर ज्वाइनिंग एंड हैव अ नाइस डे